Hello, my name is Fiona, and today I'm going to go through VAT and Sage 50 with you. Briefly, how it's set up to work as it does, and then down to the nitty gritty of how to produce the VAT return. The VAT, the VAT functionality in Sage 50 is all geared around producing this VAT tree return for the Irish revenue. It must be returned by the 19th of the month after the VAT period ends. Tax codes must be used for each transaction entered into SAGE to tell the system how to calculate and manage the VAT element of each transaction. SAGE comes with a default list of tax codes as T1 to T99 to select from, and these cover say 99% probably of situations that may arise in your business. To see this list of tax codes, you have to go to your settings and then configuration, and then select the tax codes tab as shown here. Remember, there is a tax code dropdown available when entering all transactions in Sage 50, and this will give you this list to select from. To help our customers to select correctly at Pembroke, we have created this tax code summary to help users select which code to use. We have divided it into three sections represented by the Irish flag, the European flag, and finally the USA flag represents the rest of the world. You can see we have the various Irish rates across the top of the page, 23%, 13.5%, the new 9%, zero rated and exempt. And below this, we have decide, divided each rate between resale and non-resale, as we need to differentiate our purchases between resale and non-resale in order to generate an accurate return of trading details report from SAGE at the end of the year. Under the EU section here, you'll see that we've also separated out the purchase and sale of goods and services. As again, on the VAT tree return, the E1, E2 and ES1 and ES2 boxes need to be populated accurately. T4 and T22, used for the sale of goods and services within the EU, also enable SAGE to create the V's return. So this tax code summary is available to download from our Pembroke downloads area. Or if again, if you call the support team, we'll send you um, a download link for it. And I'll give you contact details at the end of this session. Now, just a bit of insight into how the tax codes work. When we hit edit on this tax codes from the list I showed you earlier, as you can see here, there are many boxes designed to tell SAGE how to calculate and report on the VAT element of each transaction. There are options to include it in the VAT return or not, if it's sale or resale, if it's an EU transaction for goods or services, and the rate box here in the middle with standard in it tells SAGE how to treat the transaction in the return of trading details. And there's also specific boxes to be used for the postponed accounting over here. Now, thankfully, there's no need for users to edit any of these standard codes, just to understand which ones to use for any given transaction. Open the Sage software to demonstrate how to generate a VAT return within the software. Okay, so to generate the VAT return, down the left hand side, we're going to select the VAT module. We want to hit VAT return up the top, make sure nothing is highlighted here, and then hit VAT return. Okay, so this brings you up our little wizard. Number one, to prepare the VAT return. Number two is to reconcile the VAT return. And number three is to complete the VAT return. So in the preparation for the VAT, VAT, VAT return, the first thing we're going to do is back up our data. 
and this will be just a standard backup. We'll hit OK on that. Check data, yes, before we do it. That'll be done in a minute. And the backup is successful, hit OK on that. All right, so we'll do our backup. Now, the next section is your date range. Now, generally, we go and select here. I'm going to select January 24 to February 24. That's my VAT return period. I'm not going to tick include reconciled transactions unless it's a return that I'm trying to recreate. OK, the next section down here is your VAT verification settings. Now, there's eight settings within that. We generally advise people to leave them as they are and let Sage do its checking and it'll give you useful information when it returns. So again, you can see identify possible duplicate transactions, identify invoices or credits which have not been updated, purchase orders that have been delivered but not invoiced, identify transactions with a value, VAT value, where the tax code is not included in the VAT return. Again, some other potential issues here um incorrect eu transactions all useful information so we advise to leave those verifications on so once you're happy with all of that we're going to hit calculate VAT return so again it's saying this is just in my demo data because i've already done this you've selected date range as other already been reported on that's only in this instance you shouldn't be getting that hit okay 389 transactions found for this VAT return Please check the values thoroughly before you reconcile and submit your VAT return. That's because once you reconcile it, you cannot undo it, only restore the backup. So we'll hit OK on that. Now you can see the VAT3 form over here has been populated and it's giving us a VAT charge and supply of goods and services. VAT due on intra EU acquisition can postpone VAT, and those two together add up to your T1, total VAT on sales, total VAT on purchases. And then again, the net payable or repayable will come in there. You've got your E1, E2, ES1 and ES2, which are all your European VAT portions and your postponed accounting code PA1 down here. All of these are required on the VAT tree return. Now, just to note that if you are thinking, well, my VAT charge on supplies of goods and services is quite high, what you can do is click into that there and it will give you a split of what is making up that. So it'll tell you, you can scroll down to see all the tax codes that are made up that. Your sales invoices, sales credits, receipts, journals, anything that's making up that value will pop up there. And again, you can drill into it even further, right down to the transaction level. Okay. Now, again, on the left-hand side here, we've got some new information. We've got 64 potential queries from our verification results. And I'll just click into that to show you. We won't go too much detail. But again, four possible duplicate transactions. You'll hit view and it'll show you them. Possible missing entries, other potential issues, unexpected VAT values, um, possible incorrect EU EC transactions. And all of those will give you the exact details of what Sage has discovered. And you can either go and change them before you reconcile the return, or you can just continue on if you're happy that they're not um, real causes. Thank you. Next section down, make adjustments. So again, if you have manual adjustments that you want to go in here, you can click the make adjustments section and it'll give you the facility to add on adjustments. Reports, again, you can print the VAT return and you can print reconciliation reports. So your VAT return reports will just be um, your VAT return as you see it here, your summary, your detailed and your detailed by department. You can again hit them preview, hit send them to a file to save them or email them straight out. OK, so we'll just have a quick look at these two just so that we're not waiting for reports to come up. OK, so there's your. Basic VAT return. And it'll give you all your boxes down the bottom there.
Sorry, the other one is someplace here. Just do the summary this time. And there's your summary, which will show you every individual um, tax code and summary of all the boxes, just a bit more detail. OK, so once you're happy with all of those and you've run whatever reports, you can hit reconcile. Flag transactions as VAT reconciled, you cannot reverse the VAT reconciliation process. And we have the backup. Do you wish to continue? We hit yes. And again, we see here it's now reconciled. Items been flagged as VAT reconciled. Again, you can print the report down the bottom here. And over on the right hand side, you have some further options. So what we can do is post the journal. So again, here we can transfer the journal from the sales tax and the purchase tax to the VAT control account, the VAT liability account. So once you hit the post, it'll go off and do that journal for you. Now it's done. Submit to the revenue. Again, this will create a file in the folder. And once you hit open folder, it'll give you the actual file that you can then go on to the revenue website and manually upload or add the file in to upload the file, the VAT return to the revenue site. Record the payment. If at the, at the point when you're uploading it, you go and pay it, again, you can post the bank payment in Sage by just clicking there. And it, what it'll do is credit your bank and debit your VAT liability account. And again, you can add any attachments if you want to at this point. So once you've got all of that done, you can just hit close and the VAT return will appear down the bottom there. So 1st of January to February. And if you want, you can double click into it. And it will show again and again, you can click into any of these reprint the reports, anything from that screen as well. And that concludes the um, VAT in Sage 50. I hope um, you find it useful. Um, and um, there's the contact details. If you need to get in touch to get anything or get more advice, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.